Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here. I've been receiving a ton of questions lately. Oh, where are you finding the big stripers on the Delta? And I'm gonna tell you something right off the bat. It's hardly ever the same place. Yes, they do frequently repeat certain areas and I'm gonna go over that, but it's hardly ever the same place every single day. So for example, I'm whacking them in Grizzly Bay last week. I may be up in Sherman Island, Liberty Island, Big Break the next week because that's where those stripers have shifted. So what I want to do is I want to kind of talk a little bit about seasonal things, where they go, the size of stripers, and where they frequent uh, more often than not. And I'll probably talk about a few baits here too to kind of just key you in on a few extra things. And hopefully that'll help you track them down and figure out how to dial them in yourself. All right, now since we're in late fall, early winter when I'm filming this video, it may not be by the time you're watching it, but we're gonna start with fall. Uh, later September, sometimes those stripers start showing up, sometimes even earlier, but usually October, November, December is my casting for stripers time. And this is all based around casting for them. There's, if you're bait fishing for a striper, a lot of this doesn't apply. I'm talking about casting lures for them, for the big ones, the medium, and the small ones. And we're gonna go over how to locate them. First thing I want you to remember, they're coming in from the bay, they're coming in through our Delta Way, they're coming through Grizzly, they're coming through the Mothball Fleet, they're following the Sacramento River up They'll go into the Feather, the McQualamy. Stripers are going into all the rivers. So I want you to imagine that Sacramento River, and I'm gonna be laying images over, over this video footage the whole time to give you a better perspective on what I'm talking about. The closer you are to these rivers or in these rivers, the higher your odd of locating bigger than average stripers. The more tributary arms you go off, I'm not saying it's impossible to catch a bigger one, but the numbers get smaller for how many big fish frequent these areas. For example, if you come in off the main uh, Sacramento down the San Joaquin Channel all the way into the Stockton Delta where I live and frequent most of the time, very rarely are you gonna find a striper over 10 pounds, occasionally a 20 pounder. That does happen, but not nearly as often as if you were to pull off a big break, Sherman Island, Frank's Track, Liberty Island, all of these places along the Sacramento River. You can go up to the McQualamy, Snodgrass. There's a lot of different areas that I'm mentioning right here. And if I somehow blew up your spot by mentioning multiple areas that have big stripers roaming all over the place and you took offense to it, that's on you, not me. Now, when it comes to locating your bigger than average stripers, you're gonna be throwing your big baits, your glide baits, your big top water walking baits, and you're gonna be looking for flooded ponds or big shallow flats. And when I say these big shallow flats, they could have grass on them, it could be a sandbar, it could be a hard bottom shoal, but you're really looking to put the boat in about four or five feet and cast up to a foot, usually those big freakish stripers that are up there shallow eating are looking in that three to four foot of water way more often than not. You wouldn't think a 30 or 40 pound striper would be up in three feet of water, but they are and that's where they prefer to feed. You're getting that bait in that strike zone. You're guaranteed if you pass one that it's next to them. There's not a lot of ways they have to travel down or travel up, you know, vice versa, bounce around. They don't have to run it down very often. So when I say flooded ponds, and you heard me mention freight track, it's like a lake out in the middle of the Delta, big break, Liberty Island, Sherman Island, um, tons of big flooded old farm fields where the levees broke down and the water gets in there where the average depth is usually four, four to five feet or less. Those areas like that right along the main Sacramento or along the Feather or along the McQualamy are going to have those bigger fish. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind, the bigger fish are generally not chasing bait fish around. They get into these shallow areas, they look to eat squawfish, bass, bluegills, crawfish, just like any other big predators to where you're not driving around looking for birds diving for those big freakish fish. So, when it comes to areas to target for the huge ones, flooded ponds are huge. Now, what I want you to imagine is, the tide rushes into these ponds. As it's rushing in, it's coming over a shallow area. It's coming from deep water, it's flooding over a shallow area into these big areas. The way that current is hitting the striper, striper is always looking into the current. A big one, small one, they're all the same, they're all looking into the current. If the water's flowing into these flooded ponds, they're gonna be just past the inside with the current in their face 
looking to feed. So you're gonna cast way up there to them. If the tide's going out and there's a little opening going into a flooded pond, a big flooded lake area, you're gonna bomb up into that opening and they're gonna be sitting up on the high side of it with that water flowing in their face. Now that's bringing all the food source to these larger stripers. You don't need to make tons of cast in these areas, 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. If a striper's up there, the current's rolling good over three or four foot of water and you don't get bit, jump to the next one. These big ones that are up there looking for an opportunity to feed are gonna eat a big glide bait like a Savage Gear Shine Glide or a big walking bait like the Catch uh, Raptors I used to throw or a DWB, whatever you're throwing, a big Strike King Mega Dog. All this stuff works fantastic for it. So, shallow flats. Does it need to be a flooded pond? No, it absolutely doesn't. You can be right along the Sacramento River and there can be an area that sticks off the shoreline a hundred feet that's consistently three or four foot deep. These big fish will pull up on those same spots and feed frequently. So when you ask a guide, where are you catching the fish? That guide probably is in a different spot three days later. So you need to absorb as much information as you can and run these fish down yourself because they're not gonna be in the same spot. I'm not in the same spot all the time looking for stripers. I rarely even targeted the big stripers this year. Just the last few trips out, I was targeting them and I got into a few, nothing freakishly large yet, but I will and I usually do. I've been chasing largemouth. Now, the medium size, well, sometimes, when I say medium size, I'm talking stripers 12 pounds to eight pounds. Now, sometimes these stripers are gonna be in the exact same area that I told you right there. These shallow flats, uh, the points, these little island points coming up that have a real shallow point on them, they're gonna get on these things and feed. And it's gonna be tidal dependent. Where you find a striper on the outgoing tide versus a striper on the incoming tide is going to frequently change, so if you catch them on the incoming tide in that spot, that's probably they're gonna feed there maybe for the next couple days um, if you're lucky, but it could be a one-time, one-deal thing. Outgoing tide, same similar thing. Keep it in mind, try it, but don't be afraid to bounce around. Don't sit there and stick it out until you think you need to catch them. Low light hours are always gonna be a premium. So these medium-sized stripers, this is where, yes, flats do work, flooded islands work, island points work, uh, any sort of current break coming around a corner, if you see a big back eddy and it's shallow, that is a premium area for stripers. But also, now you start seeing a lot of white birds diving on bait. A lot of the time, that's your small stripers, but believe it or not, those little tiny stripers are often fed on by the eight to 12 pound class stripers. So when you see me fishing the Stockton Delta and you see me throwing a big glide bait, I'm actually trying to mimic a juvenile striper, but when I'm fishing off the Sacramento River, I'm trying to mimic more of a squawfish or a big topwater wounded fish out there. That's a different scenario. The stripers, the further you go inland, those medium or bigger stripers are feeding on the smaller stripers, but remember, the number of big ones are going to greatly decrease the more you get away from those primary rivers. So hopefully you guys absorb something from that. Hang with us guys, we'll be right back. Absolutely smoke that thing. Look at that photopotamus, man. Big one, big one, real big one. Yeah, God, choked it, dude, choked it. Look <laughs> at that. Yeah, I want that headbang. Come on. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to Boat Country and Ribbon? With one of the largest selections of aluminum boats in the valley from North River, Hughescraft, and Crestliner, chances are they have the right boat for you. And they also have a full-on service center to take care of all your maintenance or repair needs. If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. We'll see you there. Hey guys, did you know that Juris Truly is now hosting Lucky Tackle Box's monthly pan fish instructionals? And aside from relentless fish catching, I'll be breaking down the rigging and the gear you need to get going along the way. And of course, a few extra tips to help you score more fish on the goodies included in your box. So remember, the tug is our drug. So go visit LuckyTackleBox.com and get signed up today. Bigger, better, batter. The evolution of the buzz bait is upon us. The evolution baits grass burners, a high performance bass snatcher machine. High end components, inline displacement, larger profile, balanced body for fast or slower retrieves, better deflection, and oversized treble hooks. You wouldn't bring a slingshot to a gunfight, would you? Find out more at evolutionbaits.com. 
Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium, or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Peeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, Peeline's got it covered. To find out more, visit Peeline.com. Peeline, baby! Wondering what I'm doing here? That's simple. I'm logging a fish catch into the Fat Sack Outdoors online tournament fishing app where anyone can win an assortment of prizes from gift cards to hundreds of dollars worth of fishing lures. It doesn't matter if you're a boater or a bank banger, so hurry up and download the app to get started today. Ever try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Hey guys, Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and when it comes to my hooks, I demand superior craftsmanship, innovative design, and proven success. And that's why I've chose to partner with Mustad Fishing Hooks. With over 180 years in the business, you can't go wrong. So if you don't want to risk losing a big one, I suggest you do the right thing. So as you start getting into the later fall, uh, early, early winter, or even winter, let's just go with winter. Let's call it, once you reach 50 degrees, you're gonna start, the shad are gonna start to die off. So you're gonna see less bird activity. So this is where you're gonna kind of abandon chasing any sort of birds for medium or smaller size stripers. Um, this is where they're gonna be more often in those big striper zones. You're gonna find your medium stripers in those. But one thing you can keep in mind, on the Delta, we have the pumps. You ever see guys fishing the pumps? That's where these farm fields are pumping water in. And you'll see the bubbles coming up, little bubbles, big bubbles. As the water reaches the upper 40s, low 50s, this is where fishing the pumps becomes a big player. Um, you generally don't have to worry about too many baby stripers at that time. Normally I avoid baits with treble hooks unless they're a big topwater or a big glide bait, but I'll start fishing jerk baits and little flukes with a little treble hook stinger on the bottom around pumps that time of year if you're still looking for stripers. Now, dead of the wetters, dead of the winter sits in, the water reaches the 40s, okay? really really difficult to catch stripers until late february early march rolls around these stripers are going to come out of their winter funk they're going to start warming up they're going to feed up for their spawn uh, when these stripers start to spawn in late march april mid-may they're in shallow hard flat areas that are referred to as shoals and the best part is you search navionics or something or shoals on the internet along the delta it literally shows you where the majority of the shoals are these are like your a deep shoal i would say is eight feet a shallow shoal is roughly three feet you're going to see a lot of guys out trolling in the spring it's a you know a little bit cleaner time to troll they're covering big shoal areas with basically deep diving jerk baits you can still get out there throw swim baits for these fish but this is generally when they're along the main river they're hardly ever in these islands once they're actually spawning. Uh, early March, late February, you could still go throw the, for the big ones in these flooded ponds and up on these flats more often with grass. Um, once the spawn actually kicks in, these big fish are still there actively feeding. When stripers spawn, they are still actively feeding. What's a good thing to do is look for back eddies. That's where that water's swirling around in a circle. The male gets in there, He, uh, the female lays her eggs, the male gets in there, they fertilize, it gets mixed around in those back eddies. That's also a great spot to throw a big swim bait, a deeper diving jerk bait, a flutter spoon up across those areas is going to be productive for you. As summertime rolls around, you're gonna have stripers that go way up into the rivers and stripers that enter out into the bay and get back out in the surf line up and down our coast. Now, in these same areas where I'm talking about targeting the bigger stripers, if you know they're there, you heard of guys catching them the day before, they're gonna be close by if you get there and you're trying at outside of primo time. And when I mean primo time, first thing in the morning, later in the evening, or a rainy, heavy, overcast day, or good flowing current. If you have a really small tide and the current's not very strong, chances are, they're not gonna be biting as well as the day that there was a bigger tide and that current was flowing really good, forcing all that bait and those bigger stripers into those key feeding areas. Let's say it's a sunny day all of a sudden, not very windy, not primo bite weather. You can move outside those areas, look for the deepest holes and throw something like a 285 Yellowbird Doctor Spoon. 
big flutter spoon, let it fall all the way to the bottom, rip it up, let it fall all the way to the bottom, rip it up. Just a big flutter spoon like guys are doing for these big bass all across the, the whole US now. So that's another popular technique you can do to cast for them. It's not like shallow fishing for them, but it does work. You can also use big jigging spoons like uh, two and three ounce laser minnows is something I do frequently. Uh, when I'm in the Stockton Delta and I'm fishing shallow, the sun comes out or the wind backs off and I see that my big fish are no longer shallow, I'll move out to the main San Joaquin where it's a little bit deeper, go slow, try to find them on the fish finder and I'll hit them with jigging spoons. If they're concentrated, I'll pull out the big fluttered spoon to look for that bigger bite. Now when I mention a smaller tide, one thing I want you to remember, if it's a small tide and it's a very wide area of the river, the current's not flowing as hard. It's not pinpointing those fish to a certain area. So if you do have a smaller tide, look for more of a narrow area where that water's cutting through sloughs right off of those main river channels. That's gonna help position those fish. If, and vice versa, if it's a really, really big tide and it just seems like it's impossible in a narrow area, look for a wider part of the river to where you're gonna find your, where you have good boat control and it's not just tons and tons of mud pumping in. If heavy mud's pumping in, it could be really hard to catch them in that area. That's where you wanna go to a really bright color or a very audible bait, something with multiple segments or a big heavy duty rattle tra trap, something very audible. Um, don't be afraid to get really loud and pure white for stripers. If it does get gin clear, uh, bone works well, but any sort of natural bait fist presentation is also gonna help. Hopefully these tips helped you narrow them down, guys. Uh, I like to launch in Rio Vista. I like to launch at Sherman Island, um, Antioch, Pittsburgh, um, up in the McQualamy, Wimpies. There's a lot of places to launch. Anywhere you're on a river channel, come fall, or spring. Spring, I like to stay on the Sacramento River for the most part um, and fish those shoals like I was talking about. But hopefully you guys acquired some extra knowledge from this. Pay attention to my little charts that I put up there. I am going to circle some key areas for you guys to focus on to go get on some bigger fish. But remember, these are not like largemouth bass. They're not going to be in the same spot every time. You need to spend a little fuel. You need to run these fish down, search them out, find them, and you will have success. Remember, when it comes to big stripers, you need to stay determined and hit a low light, hit a premium, hit a rainy day, get some good rain gear, stay late at night. You're going to have to go into warrior mode to get these big bad boys. They're not going to come easily, but when you do find them, you're going to feel like a million bucks. Appreciate you guys watching. Informativefisherman.com, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Later, guys.